do the roll call, please? A. Yes. Briggs? Yes. Weber? Yes. Williams? Miller. Okay, we need the approval of the minutes. I move to approve the minutes August 26, 2024. Second. I can second it. Oh, okay. I wanted money. I wanted money to say. Hey. Yes. Rick. Yes. Warner. Yes. Miller. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, we uh, have a public hearing. I need a motion to go on the budget tonight. I need a motion to go to open that. So move. Do we open the public hearing? Second. Hey. Yes. Rick. Yes. Weber. Yes. Okay. Mr. Flavin. All right. This is the time set for the public hearing on the 2025 fiscal year budget. I'm pleased to present the fiscal year budget and uh, program of services, which will begin October 1 of 2024 and end on September 30, 2025. This budget was developed in accordance with Missouri state statute and is a balanced budget. As the city's major policy document, the annual budget serves as a guide and a policy plan that provides quality and affordable services to the citizens of Mexico. It addresses planned infrastructure projects for streets and stormwater improvements, bridge replacement, downtown revitalization, and workforce housing incentives. The national economy remains precarious. However, the local and regional economy has remained resilient despite inflationary impacts and changes in our post-pandemic lifestyle. This budget preserves existing municipal service levels, meets our contractual obligations, complies with regulatory and legal requirements, and funds a competitive employee compensation plan. The City of Mexico adheres to the generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP accounting. Government agencies have a special requirement to show in our financial statements and reports how much money is spent rather than how much profit was earned. Each fund operates like a separate business within the greater organization, accounting for different services and activities. This budget maintains the fund balance reserves as required by city policy and utilizes surplus savings from prior years to help fund non-reoccurring expenses and purchasing of capital assets. The preparation of this budget was a team effort reflecting a commitment to maintaining services and improving the quality of operations. The total budget expenditures are estimated at $25,495,000 with total revenues estimated to reach $21,516,000 respectively. The expenditures do exceed revenues by $3.9 million and will be funded by project reserves, unreserved surpluses from prior year's budgets, grants, and American Rescue Plan funds. The additional expenditures are for planned capital purchases, planned equipment improvement projects, project reserves, and carryover improvement projects. Budget overview in general. In 2023, the citizens of Mexico voted to impose a 3% sales tax on retail sales of adult use marijuana. The city began receiving these sales tax on marijuana purchases in January of 2024. Noble Health Group ceased hospital operations and closed the doors in March of 2022. Additional ownership changes with Platinum and Ziva were unsuccessful in their plans to reopen the hospital and the property proceeded into bankruptcy and then foreclosure by the mortgage holder, Central Bank of the Midwest. The city, in cooperation with Audrain County and the Audrain County Public Health Department, created a government health care committee, and we hired the Forvis Group to conduct a health care study to identify sustainable health care service models. They did determine that a critical access hospital is a feasible and viable option for Mexico. 
the Government Health Care Committee then began meeting with known, proven health care system providers to gather and gauge information based on the level of interest in establishing a critical access hospital in Mexico. Boone Health of Columbia, Missouri indicated a strong interest and entered into a non-disclosure agreement with us this last year. Building a new hospital will most likely take up to three years, but there is at least a commitment to investigate the process, and that has begun. The state did increase transportation funding by approving a two and a half cent per gallon tax increase on fuel purchased annually for five years starting in 2021. The city's portion of these targeted revenues are increasing as well because of that increase. The rate at which people are participating in the workforce has plateaued and it has been difficult to attract and retain employees. Therefore, providing competitive wages and benefits has placed additional pressures on the city's financial resources. Growth in the housing industry has slowed over the past decade and created an underbuilding gap. Therefore, the city and Audrain County partnered and developed a housing incentive program intended to encourage the construction of new single-family affordable workforce housing. In addition, things that are affecting the budget is the reoccurring operational expenditures and the cost of replacing capital equipment, which continues to increase on a regular basis. The county assesses property at a percent of market value. Therefore, commercial property is assessed at 32%, personal property at 33.3%, residential at 19 and agricultural at 12%. Tax rates are levied per $100 of assessed property value. This year, the total property value that we have to base our budget on is $173,554,000, which is up from a value of last year of $172,548,000, or a little over a million dollars. City property tax rates will be adjusted in compliance with the Missouri State Auditor's Office pro forma calculation, accepting the state imposed revenue neutral formula. Therefore, the city property tax rates for the general fund will be 45.91 cents per hundred, the parks and recreation 10 cents per hundred, and the public health at 20 cents per hundred. By looking at the graph on the slide, you can still see that the city direct property tax rate over the last 10 years has been fairly stable. As we look at other tax income, the sales tax revenue for all funds is anticipated to increase. Gross receipts taxes are expected to be stable. Lodging tax receipts are anticipated to be up slightly. And use tax revenue is higher than expected. Our insurance rates affecting this budget. Property and liability insurance is estimated to increase by 20%. This is primarily due to policy claims and national disasters that have happened. Dental insurance premiums are estimated to remain the same, therefore no increase in the current or upcoming year. Employee health insurance premiums are estimated to increase by 20%. This budget includes the cost associated with continuing the high deductible plan coupled with the use of the health savings account with dependent premium increases being split proportionally between employee and the city. City staffing. Similar to local governments across the region and nation, the city has faced challenges recruiting and retaining staff members in key positions. Therefore, in an effort to compete, the city is implementing a longevity pay incentive plan for employees. Full-time authorized staffing levels will remain the same at 84 positions. However, maintaining a full staffing level has been impossible in the current employment market. The city recognizes the tremendous work of city employees who produce quality results day in and day out. The City of Mexico has three position classification and pay schedules. This budget allows for a step increase for an average rate increase of 3% on all the schedules. The City provides support for outside agencies. Our charitable agencies, the Mexico Senior Center, we have budgeted $14,000 to assist with their programming. The Audrain County Historical Society, $7,400. 
Miss Missouri Scholarship Pageant, $10,000. The Help Center, $7,500. And Optimus Youth Sports Programs, $7,500. Our contract agencies, the Handy Shop, which provides recycling programs for us, $12,000. Mexico Chamber of Commerce for Marketing, $13,000. Presser Hall Community Theater Programming, $10,000. Mexico Chamber of Commerce for Economic Development Activities, $5,000. The city uses grant dollars in order to fund a number of projects. This budget is no different. In this year, the Department of Natural Resources, we have a stormwater mapping grant of 50000 A Missouri Department of Natural Resources stormwater infrastructure grant for $1.3 million. Missouri Department of Natural Resources stormwater system grant, $1.3 million additional, two grants. Uh, from DOT, runway lighting improvements, 144000 This is a project that's already been completed, and this is a reimbursement. From the DOT, a TAP grant for Moldrow Sidewalks, 71000 DOT T project, 12000 DOT Pollock Road Bridge grant, $1.1 million. And then we expect to receive uh, some ARPA funds from the county for the Housing Improvement Reimbursement Program of 110000 The general fund is the city's chief operating fund. The general fund budget of revenue for fiscal year 25 is estimated at $6,993,000 and expenditures are estimated to reach $7,625,000 plus a transfer of 58,000 to the airport fund and a set aside of 100,000 in project reserves. The non-reoccurring capital expenditures in the general fund total a little over $800,000. Therefore, considering the capital expenditures and the set aside for project reserves, no cash balances are being expended for reoccurring operating expenditures. Some of the major projects in the general fund for the year, under public safety, patrol vehicle, 45,000. Upgrade of body armor, 33,500. Upgrade of pagers, radios, 12,750. Engineering department, sidewalk replacement program, 7,500. Stormwater, annual stormwater improvements, 10,000. GIS mapping for a stormwater layer, 85,000. Drainage project on Ashley Street, 7,000. Forestry Brush Grinding Department, an aerial lift, 150000 Grinding Pad Extension, 15000 Cemetery, a storage building for dry dirt, 34300 Street Maintenance Department, Downtown Street Lighting Rewiring, 30000 Used Asphalt Paver, 125000 Heavy Duty Truck, 122000 Pickup Truck, 50000 Snow Plow, 12000 Crack and Joint Sealer, $2,500. In the Buildings and Grounds Department, City Hall Space and Needs Study, $25,000. City Hall General Building Maintenance, $25,000. And at the City's Maintenance Building for Fencing Improvements, $10,000. The Capital Projects Fund. This fund was established and activated for the receipt and appropriation and disbursement of funds received for the stormwater improvement projects. The city applied for and received two separate ARPA Department of Nat Missouri Department of Natural Resource grants for stormwater improvements. The city has received revenue of these two grants so far in the amount of $1,685,000 and we expect to receive during this new budget year $2,700,000. Wastewater operations. Budget of revenues for the fiscal year are estimated at $3,524,000. Operating expenditures are estimated at $2,739,000. An interfund inter transfer of $742,000 to the Wastewater Debt Service Fund, $30,000 to the Wastewater Private Line Repair Program, and a project reserve of $80,000. The ending fund balance provides for 90 days of operating cash reserve, required reserve for facility restoration and replacement, funds for upcoming bond payments, and future capital improvements. This budget does include $695,000 in planned capital projects. 
those projects are. For a closed caption TVGIS software, $35,500. Quick block point repair equipment, $53,000. Collection system improvements, $120,000. Residential inflow mitigation, $70,000. Metal shop building, $247,500. Thickening building improvements, 10,000. Wastewater treatment plant equipment replacement, 12,000. Flow meter eye tracker, 14,000. Lab testing equipment, 14,000. Wastewater treatment plant annual improvements, 20,000. Wastewater treatment plant lift station alarm system, 22,000. Wastewater treatment plant sludge thickening pump, 50,000. Wastewater treatment plant UV system upgrades, 27,000. The City of Mexico does have a program and a plan that we do perform system maintenance in an attempt to reduce inflow and infiltration into the collection system. This has been an ongoing effort for several years. This budget reflects no increase in wastewater rates for the upcoming year, a 0% rate increase in order to make this budget work. In the sanitation fund, budgeted revenues for fiscal year 25 are estimated at 845,000 and expenditures are estimated at 837,000, plus project reserves for equipment replacement in the amount of 11,000. The renewed residential refuse collection contract allows for an annual market rate adjustments. This budget anticipates a rate adjustment of 3% or less in the base sanitation rate for the upcoming fiscal year to begin in April of 2025. Economic Development Fund. Budgeted revenues are estimated at 440. Expenditures are estimated at 1,335,000. Expenditures include funding for the housing incentive program, which is estimated, which is intended to encourage new single family affordable workforce housing, redevelopment of the old hospital property, and investment into the Main Street program. A joint purchase was done by, uh, to purchase the old Audrain County Hospital building by the county, the Audrain Community Hospital Foundation, and the city. We made this purchase in order to control the site for future development and possibly locate the new community hospital that we are discussing with Boone Hill. Lease revenue received from the city-owned industrial speculative building is deposited into this fund. Building owner expenses related to the speculative building and the expenses for job creation, retention, industrial recruitment, and economic development planning are all paid from this fund. The city also owns a railroad spur that serves the businesses in the business park. This spur has some ongoing repairs, and we are estimating 123,000 for those repairs in the, this budget year. The Parks and Rest Re Recreation Fund is estimated uh, for budget revenue is estimated to reach 1,535,000, with total expenditures estimated at 1,958,000. The Parks and Recreation budget reflects a reduction in cash balance by $423,000 due to current carryover capital projects, equipment purchases, and planned capital projects. Money from the Parks and Recreation Fund and the use tax are making the principal and interest payment on the 10-year bank loan used to finance the Aquatic Center, as well as the two new slides that we did at the Aquatic Center this last year. <laughs> Significant projects within the recreation fund. For the parks operation side, mini skid steer with stump grinder, 50,500. Teal Lake restroom replacement, 97,000. Tyron Lou Park entrance, phase one, 45,000. Dog park fencing, 50,000. Lakeview Park trail repairs, 15,500. Snow plow blade, mini skid steer, 4,500. Picnic tables, 9,800. Green estate trail repairs, 20,000. In the pool operations for pool furniture and equipment replacement, 5,000. The Public Health and Animal Control Fund budget of revenue for fiscal year 25 is estimated to be at 395,000. And expenditures are estimated at 528,000. 
the expenditures exceed revenues will be funded with unreserved fund balances and restricted cash from a designated estate donation. The reduction in cash balances is funding for the dangerous building, demolition program, and nuisance abatement as well as the city also plans to use some of the designated estate donation funds for acoustic sound proofing, fencing, and repainting of the floor surface at the animal shelter. Airport fund. The budget of revenues for the fiscal year estimated to be at 230,000 with expenditures estimated at 195,000. A $58,000 transfer from the general fund is being made to support base operations. A reimbursement of $144,000 from the DOT grant is expected for capital projects we've already completed. The Capital Improvement Sales Tax Fund. The dedicated Capital Improvement Sales Tax Fund is estimated to bring in $1,074,000 in revenue. All expenditures from this fund are for capital outlay projects. A transfer of $145,000 is grant match for the Muldrow Sidewalk Phase 2 and 3 project, $20,000 for the Pollock Road Bridge replacement, and a transfer of $490,000 to the general fund for street maintenance and stormwater projects. The major programs and projects in this fund for the year, pavement repair maintenance, $400,000. Sidewalk improvements, $35,000. Pavement and curb replacements, $65,000. Hunting Field and Teal Lake Intersection Reconstruction, $75,000. Smiley and Bass for Intersection Reconstruction, $4,000. Smiley Lane Extension, $344,000. And Project Reserves of $20,000. Capital Project Reserve Use Tax Fund. This fund was originally established to transfer unreserved surpluses from the city's general fund to be held in reserve for future capital projects. As a part of the city's debt management plan, the city plans ahead, saves money, and uses a pay-as-we-go pay approach for most capital project purchases. The citizens of Mexico approve the collection of the local use tax. The revenue from the use tax was committed to support capital and community improvement projects as well as the expense to maintain those assets. The estimated revenue into this fund for the year is $817,000 with expenditures estimated at $637,000. The expenditures in this fund are for an interfund transfer to the Parks and Recreation Fund to support the interest and principal payment on the bank loan for the Aquatic Center, as well as a contribution to the City Hall Building Fund. This budget document would not have been possible without the passion, energy, talent, and dedication of a number of City employees involved in the process. I would especially like to acknowledge Roger Haynes, Vicki Dinky, and the department directors for their assistance in this budget process. I sincerely hope this budget is well received by the City Council and the citizens of Mexico. In Council, that is the end of the presentation, unless you have any questions that we may answer. Any questions? Well, thank you, Bruce. Uh, thank you, staff. Um, Move to close the public hearing. Wait, 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 wait. Well, I thought you were <laughs> Do moving mind. off. Yeah. Okay, we are in public hearing. If there's anybody who's in the audience who wants to step forward to um, comment on the pub on the uh, budget, uh, step forward. Say your say your name, say your address. You have three minutes. And I'm not seeing any. And if not, okay, Larry, we'll entertain your motion. Which was to close the public hearing. Second. Hey. Yes. 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 Okay, we're ready for the new business. And uh, yeah, we have uh, we have first thing is an ordinance with two re with two readings by title only and passage and it has to do with our budget. I'm going to assume there's no other comment or on that. Okay. I move for bill number 2024, first read bill number 2024-52. Second. Second. Yes. Three. Yes. Seven. Yes. Three. Yes. Bill number 2024-52 in ordinance revising the budget for the City of Mexico, Missouri for the fiscal year October 1, 2023 to September 30th, 2024. Exclusive and adopting the budget for the fiscal year October 1, 2024 to September 30th, 2025. 
inclusive uh, appropriating the funds as allocated to various accounts and authorizing the expenditure of such funds by the city manager and other officials for the purpose indicated. I move for second reading of bill number 2024-52. Second. A. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Weber. Yes. Williams. Yes. Bill number 2024-52, an order revising the budget for the City of Mexico, Missouri for the fiscal year October 1, 2023 to September 30th, 2024, inclusive, and adopting the budget for the fiscal year October 1, 2024 to September 30th, 2025, inclusive, appropriating the funds as allocated to various accounts and authorizing the expenditure of such funds by the City Manager and other officials for the purposes indicated. I move for passage of bill number 2024-52. Second. Hey. Yes. Ready? Yes. Ready? Yes. Ready? Yes. Okay, moving on to uh, our uh, six uh, new business resolutions requiring reading by title only and passage. First one is bill number 2024-53, resolution authorizing the state manager to agreement with girls night out. Yes, Your Honor. The uh, Tourism Commission has met and has a recommendation regarding funding. And to cover that recommendation, Roger Haynes. Good evening, Council. The Mexico Tourism Commission met at noon on Tuesday, August 27th via Zoom, and as part of that meeting, they reviewed an application for funding for an upcoming event. The organization is actually one of the teams for Relay for Life. Girls Night Out is the name of that team. They are looking to hold an event, a night of music, on Friday, October 25th at the Knights of Columbus, uh, featuring Jack Clayton, a very talented musician, as most of you know, plays 20 plus instruments, has opened or uh, participated in, in many country music events and with individuals known as, uh, like Brad Paisley, Garth Brooks, Jason Aldean, Alan Jackson, of course, many, many others. The, after reviewing the request for $500, to support this event, the commission uh, does recommend the full $500 be uh, provided uh, to the Girls' Night Out Relay for Life team for that night of music on the 25th of October. Staff recommends that council concur with the Mexico Tourism Commission's recommendation and proceed with reading by title only and passage of the attached resolution. Do I have any motion? Move for a reading of Bill 2024-53. Second. A. Yes. 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 Bill 2024-53, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with Girls Night Out Relay for Life team for recommended funding from the Mexico Tourism Tax. Move for passage of 2024-53. Second. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay, moving on to other business. Uh, we have a staff report uh, on uh, Plan B development to conduct emergency repairs. We've got a no. We've B. B. Bill number Under new business. Four. Oh, I have one more. Sorry, I did that. Overlooked it. Okay, moving on to Rep. Bill number 2024-54, resolution accepting the stormwater maintenance agreement with CBTMSSES. Mr. Schleiber. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. As a community, we are regulated under the municipal separate storm sewer system community by the Department of Natural Resources. And as such, we have to uh, have a program of obtaining permits and so on for uh, stormwater runoff. To cover this particular subdivision and the agreement, we will turn to uh, Drew Williver. Well, good evening, Council. Uh, Bruce gave a good introduction there. This is a requirement of the Department of Natural Resources. So any city over 10,000 in size has a very similar system to it. Uh, the gist of the system is that when we have a, a disturbance of over one acre of ground, we have to put in some sort of a document which provides for maintenance of the stormwater countermeasures, if you'll call them. They're also known as best management practices for perpetuity of the site. So that essentially in this particular 
particular case, it's requiring the owners of the site to maintain the stormwater detention uh, that is present on the site. And so this particular resolution would accept the stormwater maintenance agreement uh, from CBTM SSES LLC and relates directly to the, uh, as I mentioned, the detention basin that is out on site at Park Creek Subdivision Phase 2, Plat 2. So we've reviewed the document. All is in order. We'd recommend proceeding with reading and title, uh, excuse me, reading by title and passage of the resolution. If, you've had, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Have we already taken possession of, or are they already hooked into our system? Yes, and we actually brought the uh, resolution for that. Boys, well, it been a couple, few months, probably. Uh, the stormwater that ties into it, the curb and gutter inlets and all that. I thought so. Because there's like, they got, we were out there the other day mm -hmm. looking at it, and they got dirt, and I mean, they got stuff all over the roads. They're going into the... It would have to be if a rain came and have to be going in our sewer system. Well, we do a Is monthly okay? no. <laughs> we do a monthly inspection on that side, so it may be a condition that changed since that inspection. So we'll make sure to get on that tomorrow and take a look at it. If you all notice anything like that throughout town, uh, don't hesitate to mention it to us because um, that does end up in our stormwater. It's a violation as well, but it ends up causing obstructions and us more maintenance in the long run. Yeah, I just noticed it. They were putting in a, it was rock for a pine pebble, looked like for bottom, the base of a house. Oh, and they had dumped it in the road by the house and were using it. So it might be gone now, but that's where they dumped it. And I was like, what? Yeah, it's also on property put out of the road. Yeah, you can't dump. Uh, that, for the record, you cannot dump on the road either. That'd be an obstruction in the public right of way. So they need to put that outside of the public right of way. So by all means, if you notice those things, please let us know and we'll go out and take care of it. I was out of curiosity, since we mentioned this, do we have any kind of requirement that when people are even building a home that they uh, screen the street from mud and dirt that washes into the street? Not for unless they disturb an acre our stormwater ordinances don't kick in but what we do have is what we call an illicit discharge ordinance and so that would classify as an illicit discharge so if we know about it for example in this case let's just say it's one home though that's what and, I'm and we find out that let's say they had a big rain and they're in the middle of grading the property it washes out in the street that would be a notice of violation for the contractor we would then work with the contractor to make sure they clean up the mess probably deploy some uh, protection to our storm sewer if it's not a ditch street to catch it before it gets into the drain hopefully and make them take a skid steer and clean it up if there's not a big rain it just happens to get graded into the street or something like that there's no prevent nothing no same same, same premise would same apply situation. yeah okay. it'd still be an illicit discharge doesn't matter if there's rain present or not it's the idea that it could get discharged because the the gutter on the street is actually considered a stormwater conveyance so as soon as it hits the street it's considered part of the stormwater system and it'd be an illicit discharge okay move for reading of bill 2024-54 second Yes. 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 Bill 2024-54, resolution accepting the stormwater maintenance agreement with CBTMSES LLC for the development of Park Creek Subdivision Phase 2, Plat 2. Move for passage of 2024-54. Sorry. Yes. 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 Okay. Now, now we're ready for other business. A staff report about authorizing Plan B development to conduct orders and repairs to the sanitary sewer. Mr. Slater. Yes, Your Honor. Council, if you remember, this was an item that was discussed at the last meeting, and we've had some changes, and uh, to discuss those, uh, Drew Wilford. Yep, uh, Council, we approached the Ertl family with the discussion that we had last Council meeting. They agreed to pay the full difference. So if you recall, there were two options, and I'll back up a little bit further. Staff had found a collapsed line at this location, which would be 1414 Briarwood Place, and approached the Ertls about replacing that line. But they had built a large water feature directly in the easement and over the line, so we would be disturbing that 
water feature. We asked our on-call contractor to get two, ease, uh, two estimates, excuse me, one estimate for repair in place and disturbing the water feature and one estimate for rerouting for minimal disturbance to them. The difference in the two was $12,000. So initially we had approached them with a 50-50 split. At council's direction, we approached them at a 100% split and they agreed. So they are paying for 100% of the overage, the difference between the two. So in this case, the city will pay $12,000 and the Ertles would pay $12,000. So we would recommend proceeding with uh, reading by title only and passage of this. And I'm sorry, this is a resolution staff report. We'd, uh, we'd recommend authorizing us to proceed with the repair to reroute and we will be paying 12,000, which would be the equivalent of what it would cost to repair in place where the line is, and then they will pay 12,000. They already have provided that money uh, for rerouting the sewer, and there will be an easement provided as part of that. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Sounds good. Any other questions, comments? Motion to move for the authorization of Plan B development to conduct emergency repairs to the St. Louis sewer collection system. Second. Okay. Yes. Three. Yes. Seven. Yes. Seven. Yes. Okay. Claims. Move to pay the claims. Second. Okay. Yes. Three. Yes. Seven. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Turn the page. We are ready for council comments. Um, and I think I'll start with this because I wanted to comment on our new business in town, which is the Western Smokehouse, and it was very exciting. And I've had a lot of people in the community say to me, how did you manage that? And so I've been very complimentary to our staff about it, And uh, but it is exciting. And I know it was kind of quick happening, And um, it, uh, but uh, anyway, we welcome them. We welcome, and I, they are making their product for chomps. Is that the way I understand that? Yeah, and if you want chomps, you can go out to Ollie's and you can buy chomps and see what that tastes like. It's really good. Okay, um, Steve, do you want to go next? Uh, just, uh, you know, great job on the budget every year. Um, you know, it, it, it amazes me that, uh, you know, all the numbers I see cross-eyed and stuff, and we do a great job of dispersing that. I did have one uh, question on this, the slide that we inputted. Um, did that help increase, did we have an increase of, uh, of uh, swimmers this year because of the slide? Did we see any uptake of people visiting? We had about a $10,000 revenue increase, uh, combination of concessions and uh, admissions. That's good. Move we adjourn. Oh no! No, I'm just kidding. Just no, we can start. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Right. yeah. He's, he's here. We can yeah, right. Whatever you say. This <laughs> one. Kudos on the budget. You guys do a great job every year. Appreciate all the hard work you guys put into this. Um, I know it just doesn't happen overnight. Um, also. Um, I'm happy that we got chomps coming. I hope they hope they can find their 250 workers. But <laughs> that's all I got. You just walked in. Do you want to take a second to catch your breath? I'm uh, ready to talk. I'm sure everything's perfect. So I'll just live the dream with what you all decide. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Bruce, do you have anything? Nothing for time. All right, we go to public comments. And one thing I wanted to say about making that statement that I say before the public hearing, we are on TV, so we have an audience watching us and saying that they don't see what's out there, they don't see who's sitting there. So it's just kind of a matter of routine to say that, so they know if there's anybody there, they, they, we, we have heard them. So, so they can't yeah. see the folks that staff over here sleeping? I don't think they can't see the people sleeping out here at the workforce. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, public hearing. If there's anybody who wishes to address the uh, council, would you step forward, state your name, your address, and uh, you have three minutes. And I'm not seeing anyone, so let's move on to. I need an adjournment. I move to adjournment into executive session pursuant to revised statute of Missouri. 610.021 personnel matters. Okay, thank you all for coming tonight. Got thank you for presenting. Right. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. got oh, we got a vote. Sorry. Sorry. Already voting. I voted. Weber? Yes. Williams? Yes. 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 Okay. Bye.